The oceans of the world make up some of the most interesting places on the planet, and this is mostly because of the diverse life forms that exist down there. A wide variety of creatures underwater react to their ecosystem in some of the most bizarre and strange ways. The whale explosion, for example, is one absurd event that takes place underwater. However, the effects of this explosion are not limited to under the sea. They can also be felt on the shore, leaving an indelible effect on the land as well. The explosion of whales sounds odd. It seems like something you hear of in the movies. In April 2014, nine blue whales were crushed to death in heavy ice off the western coast of Newfoundland and Labrador. A few weeks later, a couple of them washed up on shore in neighboring communities. Within a few days of being reported in the local media, this was a top news story around the world. Why? Because people were concerned about the future of this fascinating endangered species? Not entirely. People were mainly concerned that these whales might explode. It turns out that there's a specific reason for these explosions, which is interestingly not exclusive to these aquatic mammals. There are other animals that have exploded. Other instances of exploding animals are defensive in nature or the result of human intervention. What other animals explode? In the spring of 2005, Toads in Germany and Denmark started to explode. A baffling number of a thousand toads had exploded within a couple of days. Scientists had great concern over this unusual event as the explosions always happened at night with a loud pop. The reason behind this could not be traced to any chemical reaction of the internal organs of the toads. The explosions happened in order to wade off aggressive predators like crows who enjoyed eating toad livers. The toads puffed up to resist these predators and in the end, they exploded. Interestingly, aside from toads, there are other animals that have exploded. An award-winning duck had exploded into many tiny pieces after it consumed a pan of yeast. In January 1932, it was reported that a dairy cow was partially blown up and killed on a farm at Kennedy Creek while it was being milked. Apparently, the cow had picked up a detonator while grazing in the paddock and it exploded while she was chewing her cud. This explosion had left the farmer milking the cow unconscious. While some animals explode as a defensive mechanism, some are strategically used as a weapon. One animal in this case is rat. The explosive rat, also known as rat bomb, is a weapon created by the British Special Operatives Executive in World War II for use against Germany. Rat carcasses were filled with plastic explosives and were to be distributed near some German boiler rooms. However, the explosive rats were not used because the first shipment was intercepted by Germans. Lucky for them. Humans could also explode after death, but this is not a common occurrence because most corpses are taken care of before they get to the decomposition stage, unlike whales. For big old whales, post-mortem explosion happens either as a result of natural decomposition or deliberate attempts at carcass disposal. The explosion is not instantaneous. It follows a process with explosion as its final outcome. What's the idea behind this process? In case you aren't able to tell yet, only dead whales explode, and so the explosion process starts with a whale carcass washing up on a beach. After death, a series of biochemical reactions occur within the carcass, and the result of these reactions is the dreadful explosion we're going to discuss. According to scientists, methane gas starts to build up in the body of a whale once it dies, and this methane can be linked to the activity of gut bacteria. The bacteria proliferate rapidly and stay in the body, continuing to create methane and other toxic gases such as ammonia and even carbon dioxide. Because there is no more functional outlet, these gases are trapped in the body of the whale, causing a rise in internal pressure. The gas built up until it finally perforated the whale's skin like an overinflated balloon, resulting in a violent expulsion of blood and guts. Most whales sink to the seabed when they die, and these exploded whale carcasses, or whale falls, provide a massive influx of food for sharks and other species. After inevitably sinking to the seafloor, these can continue to feed scavengers for years, if not decades. 
According to Andrew David Thaler, a marine biologist who spoke with National Geographic after the Newfoundland strandings, first the mobile scavengers, large deep-sea sharks, hagfish, and others come in to remove soft tissue and break apart the carcass. Later, creatures like the bone-eating worm arrive to slowly break down the bones, Thaler said. This entire process can take 30 years or more, so the afterlife of a whale is as ecologically significant as its natural life. A whale explosion is usually initiated by external exertion. Hence, external forces like moving the carcass can trigger this explosion. Enough said. Let's look at some of the most popular stories of whale explosions and how these events were managed. In some reported cases, the explosion was intentionally induced through the aid of dynamite to prevent the destruction of the ecosystem and environment. For example, in Florence, Oregon, in November of 1970, a whale carcass was intentionally detonated using dynamite. It was a 45-foot-long sperm whale which had been washed ashore, and because it interfered with beach activity, it was a menace and considered a threat to public safety. The explosion of this whale was induced by the Oregon Highway Division using half a ton of dynamite to dispose of the rotting carcass. The explosion was observed by onlookers who feasted their eyes on the whole process. And of course, they had so much to say. A report made by the Register Guide stated, Chunks of the animal flew in every direction and people around started to scream and run for cover. It was recorded that no one was harmed by the explosion of the whale's body parts, but the whole process exceeded everyone's expectations. Paul Lindman gave a remarkable and interesting account of it. In his words, the blast blasted blubber beyond all believable bounds. Let's call it an alliteration of explosions. From the video, we can see that the force of the explosion sent the body parts of the whale and other rotten matter flying in every direction. Another recorded whale explosion event happened in January 2004 on the streets of Tainan, a city in Taiwan. This time, the explosion was not triggered by an explosive, but rather, it happened as a result of high internal pressure within the carcass. The whale in question, also a sperm whale, died from injuries sustained from being hit by a large ship. The remains of the whale was being transported to a research center when the carcass exploded. As expected, this explosion caused traffic on the road. Pedestrians and cars were soaked in whale blood, and many Tainan residents complained about how unpleasant the experience was. In his exact words, one of them said, This blood and other stuff that blew out on the road is disgusting, and the smell is really awful. After the ordeal, it took 13 hours, three large lifting cranes, and 50 workers to get the mammal loaded on the trailer truck for its trip to the research center. That's right, the mishap did not stop the Research Institute from inspecting the whale remains like they originally intended. Interestingly, whale explosions can occur in the middle of the surface of the ocean. This has happened in quite a number of cases. In a report made by Stacy Libertor, a humpback whale exploded on the surface of the Pacific Ocean. This incident earned the title National Geographic Moment and was witnessed by a group of boaters who filmed the horrifying event. These witnesses recounted watching the carcass explode, releasing blood and rotten guts everywhere. Generally, after every scenario of a whale explosion, one would think that's the end of its existence and usefulness. This appears not to be so. Aside from experiments conducted on the whale, in some cases, the bones of the whale have been displayed in a museum as artifacts. The process of deboning an animal can be a tasking one that requires a high level of patience, commitment, and determination. How much more an animal as massive as a whale? Therefore, the process of deboning a whale and preparing the bones for display can take as long as three years after the explosion. Mark Engstrom, the ROM's senior curator and deputy director of collection and research and his crews spent weeks knee-deep in whale guts, hacking away tons of blubber to remove the bones and a 180-kilogram heart. Finally, the world's most famous dead whale got a second life as its skeleton went on display March 11th at the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto. The creativity of Mark Engstrom shows that whale explosions don't necessarily have to end in a bloody and messy way. In this presentable and visually satisfying form, 
The bones are fit for presentation in a museum. Talk about creativity! A whale explosion isn't an instant occurrence. It doesn't just happen when the whale explodes, just like we've seen. It can be traced to a series of reactions that take place in the dead whale's body. The explosion is only the final, nasty outcome of these reactions. Thankfully, whale explosion is not a popular phenomenon. If it were, imagine how many people would be traumatized from just witnessing one. The whole event would ordinarily be characterized as a bad occurrence. Despite how bad it seems, it's a good thing that some experts have found a way to craft beauty and purpose from such a weird and nasty event. This goes to show that nature is made up of several different occurrences which all take place in a well-balanced dance. It's not always beautiful and pleasing, but at the end of every cycle, something meaningful and beautiful can be revealed. In any case, beautiful or not, one thing is constant. Nature is intriguing, and there is always something new to be fascinated by.